Hi, I am Kedger on Two Wheels and today we'll learn how to ride your bike for the first time. All bikes are divided into two sides, the right side and the left side. On the right side you have your stop and go, you have your accelerator, your brake lever and your brake foot pedal. On the left side you have your gears, you have your clutch lever and you have your gear foot pedal. Since controlling the throttle is a constant while you are riding, all other controls, all the other essential controls are offset to your left. So on your left handlebar you have your high beams and low beams, your indicators and your horn. The only thing that is stuck on the left side is those that are non-essential to riding, namely the emergency cutoff switch and the starter button which usually is a little red button over here. On this bike in particular both are together in a function here on this one so this isn't exactly the best one to show this on. So on to the controls. This is the accelerator. This works in a very simple fashion. You just rotate it to open, release it to close. Notice that it doesn't have a lot of play but this is way more than enough because your wrist doesn't really rotate all that much so basically this is off this is on. Your brake lever works exactly like a bike. Train. Your brake lever works exactly like a bike, just press to brake. The harder you press, the more you brake. There's a whole video just on how to brake because there's a couple of details on this. And your foot pedal, you just press it down to brake. The issue is, the difficulty is, and that's most likely why you're watching this video, the clutch. How does this work? Clutch and gears. It's actually much simpler than it appears and much simpler than what I'm going to explain. Okay, don't worry too much about it. It's fairly simple. So how does it work? In an oversimplification, the clutch is a rubber disc or two rubber discs between the engine, which should be this hand, and the wheels, which would be this one. So the way the clutch is now, I'm, it's released. It's like this, the two discs are locked together. So when the engine rotates, the wheels rotate. So as your engine ticks over and turns around at your idling 1000 rotations per minute, your wheels are going to start rotating forwards. Now this would be all fine and dandy, but when you come to a stop, you would stop the engine, like let's brake and stop. And now your engine is off, because an internal combustion engine needs to be functioning to be able to function. Okay, so that's what the idle is. It needs to be rotating constantly at at least 1000 rotations per minute to function. Otherwise it will stall and you'll have to press this button or this gizmo to turn it on again. Not ideal. So that's why you need a clutch. And how does the clutch work? When you press it in like this, these two discs separate. So now your engine is rotating, but your wheels aren't. You're stopped. Okay. When you want to start again, what you do is, your wheels are, ro your engine is rotating, but the wheels aren't, you release the clutch so that it starts touching the other disc. And so with this friction, your wheels start rotating until these two discs are synchronized, so they're now rotating at the same speed. Now your engine is directly pushing your wheels. And if you go faster, it'll spin faster. If you go slower, it'll spin slower. And when you want to come to a stop, you just separate them, break the wheels, and the the engine keeps on ticking over. This is all the clutch is. Technically it's a little bit more complicated, it's one, not one disc, it's a stack of discs like so, but whatever, doesn't matter. It's just this. Think of it like this. Imagine you're riding a tandem bicycle with two people and you're riding at the front, you have the, the handlebars, but you don't have foot pedals. The guy riding on the back is blindfolded and he only has the foot pedals and, and no steering. So he doesn't know what's going on. So you have to tell him, go ahead. Oh, sorry. He is also um, deaf, so he can't hear you. So he will just assume you always want to run, so he'll always be pedaling forwards. So when you want to brake, he'll still be pedaling forwards. Okay, and if you stop, he's going to fall off the bike. So what do you do? You make a, a way to separate him from the wheels so you can stop. That's what the clutch is. So, getting on the bike, you always do it from the side, the side stand is on, which is usually on the left. I don't recall any bike that has the side stand on the right. 
always on the left, left foot forwards and just swing over and get on it. Now, how to start? Ignition on. You see this green light here? This green light tells you it is in neutral, the gearbox. Neutral is in between first and second. To engage first, you click down, like so. To engage neutral, half a click up. And another half a click and you're in second. Again, half a click down and you're in neutral, half a click up and you're in second. To go straight to first, solid click, like so. Now let's go back to neutral. But this means you can start the engine, you don't need to press the clutch, although out of habit I do. Neutral means it's the same thing as the clutch, only it's in the gearbox. So the engine turns, the gearbox turns, but that turning is not sent to the wheels. But I usually also pull the clutch, out of habit. Okay? Notice, I'm going to put the side stand down. With the side stand down, if you didn't engage first, this happens. The engine turns off automatic, automatically, unless you have a really, really old bike, so that you aren't catapulted forwards with your side stand down. This also signals to everyone around so that you are a rookie. Notice I started in first, but I had the, the gear engaged, but as a good habit, starts in neutral, with the clutch engaged, just in case. Then double check your side stand, or just kick it to pull it up and you won't be able to kick anything. Engage first with the clutch depressed. You depress the clutch and engage first and here. You hear a clunk and now if I release the clutch it's going to fire forwards. Now here's the trick. Look at the clutch carefully. I'm going to do it like so. This is going to be really hard because it's not the usual position. So I'm no longer working on muscle memory. Look. Nothing. See? Nothing. When it reaches here, the bike is starting to move. See? And now, whoops, back in, this, this is just momentum, let's do it again, slowly, and the bike starts to move. Again, I'm going to do it the way I usually do it, because I already know it's here, I'm braking with my foot, I already know it's here, okay? So I'm going to do now, look, just release it, kind of up to here, now here slowly, and it starts to move, and I put a little bit of throttle, and you release the rest, and we're off. And now to put in the rest of the gears, again, stopped, fully in, until it's biting, accelerates, leave it a bit, and it's off. You'll get the hang of this. Now, to pull in the next gear, you pull it in, click on upwards for seconds, and then do the same thing again. Only, now that since you are no longer stopped, it is much easier and you can do it much faster and even if you are a bit ham-fisted, it will still work, look. I'm going to put in third. Third, I'm just going, while throttling a bit, I'm just going to release it. It just goes a little weird, but it still goes, yeah? So don't, fourth, all the way to the half and stop. And going down, you just click down Half, half clutch, release clutch. Going to first. Clutch in, click down, half clutch, release clutch. I'm going to flip around now. Again, first gear. Clutch in, click up, half clutch, release clutch. And again, clutch in, click up, half clutch, release clutch. Actually, this half clutch, release clutch can be way, way faster. Look at this. It can be just like this, and even that was slow. I'm going to look here and just show you how I usually do it, how everyone ends up doing it as soon as you have a little bit of experience, and I mean like half an hour of this. And the higher the gear, the easier it is to do it, okay? So I'm going to flip around and I'm going to show you my party piece just to finish this off. Because in case you don't know, you don't need, you don't actually need the clutch. This is for advanced ones, you don't, you shouldn't really be doing this, but look, no hands. Let's just click seconds. 
and now up now up is easy the gearbox is built for this you can just click but down <laughs> down's the trick why because the way motorcycle ge um, gearboxes are built they can be engaged directly without the clutch they, they can do that and there's not a lot of them no damage going up except maybe from first to second and little to no damage going down if you're not too violent but that's something for an advanced uh, topic and not this one so that's how you ride your bike the first time sounds complicated the first 10 times is going to be a freaking nightmare other than that super easy barely an inconvenience and you learn to enjoy that thoroughly so that's it gauge your out